Hey, hey, hey guys. Today we're gonna do a decoder installation. Okay, so this is the first part of my conversion from, from getting rid of my NCE decoder stuff. I'm doing this only for the fact that NCE doesn't cooperate with the ECOS, and that's mainly because of the Railcom system that's on there. So I am slowly getting rid of anything that has NCE decoders, which unfortunately is gonna be three trains. I have uh, two of these GP40 units and an SD60. All right, so let's get it started. that we're gonna need we're gonna need the train itself then we are going to need a decoder I'm using Digitrax DN 163AO uh, so the decoders that I'm gonna be switching over to is either gonna be Digitrax or it's gonna be obviously ESU decoders lock sound decoders all right so now that we have our decoder the tools that we're gonna need is a Tweezers, preferably pointy nose tweezers, and a precision toolkit. Uh, we're gonna be looking at this one here. If you don't have a precision toolkit, that's fine. You're gonna need, I don't even know what number this is. I've used this so much that the number came off. But I guess a small, not super small, but a small star head screwdriver. I'm gonna rate this decoder installation about a five out of 10, only for the fact that it's not super easy, but it's not super hard. Super hard is like you have to rewire something completely like to do a hardwire uh, decoder install. I usually, I personally keep these styrofoams in check only for the fact that it keeps me from bending the handrails from uh, when I'm manhandling the shell. All right, so what you wanna do is grab the, grab the fuel tank with one hand, grab the, the shell with the other one and just give it a pull. There you go, it should come off right, right off. So I'll put the shell off to the side. Uh, next thing, what's gonna end up happening, just to let you guys know, the chassis is actually gonna have to come apart in order to take the board out. Uh, the board is kind of wedged underneath each side. So this is why I'm saying it's a bit of a, like a five out of a 10 install. So what you have here is you have two screws, uh, one on either end of the locomotive to undo. Um, then you have these little tabs here and then there's some underneath the fuel tank. Now we gotta replace the fuel tank. The fuel tank wraps around the, the bottom part here. So what I do is I'll, I'll just concentrate on one side, just grab the top here and just kind of pull it apart. So fuel tank is out, leave that off to the side. And you know what, while we're in here, I'm gonna get some of my grease stuff just in case if it needs to be greased and yeah. All right, for as usual for my maintaining stuff, I have this 106 plastic capable lubricating grease with uh, PTFE, whatever that is, and then number 108 from LaBelle. Okay, so as I have that stuff, let's go ahead and open up the decoder. Now what's really cool with this one is it has six functions, so you have your front and rear lights. Then you also have another four more functions for lighting effects. So if I want, so if you want to throw in ditch lights or a, a beacon light, which I might do a beacon light on this one, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. And all you just do is, all you do is right here on these tabs, you just solder your connections, follow the instructions. It'll tell you what connections are what. I know for a fact that the one connection right here, that little tiny plate, is your common. Then you have one, two, three, and four, I do believe. Don't quote me on that. Always follow and listen to your instructions. All right, so now that we got the board out, let's uh, place the board off to the side and start taking apart this bad boy. So what you'll see over here is that tiny little plastic bolt. It's actually inside the chassis, which is pretty cool. You don't have to do too much. You don't have to have like a pair of small pliers or something. So it's not too bad. So just go in and just start taking it apart. Rule of thumb before we go any further, use the top lid of your case as a train. Um, this just popped out. We're gonna have to take the trucks off anyway. So, yeah, so just pop off the trucks. Now we can go ahead and unscrew. 
I'll just throw the screws here in the lid so that way we don't lose it. If the nut doesn't want to come out, that's fine too. All right, next thing to do is uh, slowly and gently pull apart the chassis. Now what you're going to see is the motor and all the gears and stuff is going to stay to one side and then of the chassis, then the other, chassis, the other side of the chassis is just like a cap. I don't know, I do not know which one it is, but we'll find out. Oh, another one that we have to pull off is uh, this piece right here. It's the like light guard thing. Anyways, okay, so now that all that is through, let's uh, slowly take, a, take everything apart. Supposed to go on the other side anyways so the gears popped out but that's okay okay so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out the motor only for the fact that I do want the motor on that right side of the chassis if you do do this and you don't know what is where and when that's all right because these are the tabs the pickup tabs and you have a gap right here so that's where they go Okay, the, re the reason why I'm putting it this way is if you look on the, the worm gear that's over here, one side is shiny and then the other side, there's kind of like it's indented inside. Uh, so what we want is the sh when we put the gear back in, the shiny piece is going to be upright. So install the gear back in. And now we're going to have to rotate the cube. See, that's fine. This is not. Right, there you go. As you're doing your installation, if you have these little guys that pop out, uh, don't be afraid. These are the insulating bushings. Remember I was telling you about how the chassis is kept apart just by a little bit. So to insulate it, so these are your insulating bushings. Uh, when you reinstall it, that's where you're going to put it. So we'll put these with the screws and not lose them. All right, so now that we have this back together, uh, we're going to just check over some stuff here, make sure everything's clean. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put some grease on these worm gears. I'm gonna go through them, make sure that there's uh, no lint or any garbage. Doesn't have to be perfect, remember, uh, the gears are gonna go right through it. So your front, easy way to identify it. When you have this one, you have this little tiny notch in here. That's where that um, light sleeve goes in, or light blocker. Anyway, so this would be the front, this is the front, and then that would be the back. Again, it all has to do with these pickups as well. So now that we know that's the front, this is how the old decoder went, and that's how the new decoder needs to go in. Another thing that you're going to need from the old board, they used, I guess it was uh, fillers or something, anyways, these little copper, copper pieces that slide in. So you'll see right when I pop it out, there you go, this. We're going to have to put this on the old one. This is very soft, very fragile, so be very careful with it. Okay, so for the D D Digitrax decoder, <clears throat> Where you're going to see is the ones with the chips are actually going to face closer to the chassis. The one that has no, uh, barely any chips and the little tiny LED lights right here is going to be up. So let's get those copper tabs onto this side. Sorry guys, if I'm out of frame and if it's, oh. <laughs> That's another thing you gotta be careful. It might be a good idea to put maybe paper towel underneath. Okay, so once we get it in there, I just take my tweezers, I give it a little bit of a squeeze. Yeah, see, it's a little loose. I'm not gonna recommend this. If you guys wanna do it, you do it. I'm just gonna close the tab a little bit, just very slightly just so that it gives it a little bit of resistance to hold. There 
There you go. Sorry if I was off screen there. Okay, so the first one's in, out of four. Too. I'm not gonna let you guys watch this, but essentially the reason why we need these They act like shims or wedges uh, In here where the decoder slides in it's a little thick and like I said these act as wedges So that way the decoder sits in here snug and it gets good contact through the chassis Here's the, the pickup tabs for the motor. This is the pickup tabs for there and then these ones are going in there. Now, if you really want, you can try to fish these pickup tabs through the slots and then you can solder them into the board. Okay, there's one there. This is where it kind of gets tricky. Before we do, <laughs> I almost forgot. These guys, it's gonna keep from frying the decoder. Slightly squeeze. Remember, you have to put in the. Yeah, let's back up a little bit. You also have you also have these plastic tabs that were help holding the chassis together by the fuel tank. So just push those in. And squeeze. Now that we have our plastic nuts in there, uh, let's put in the screws. Okay, so what I do is I'll put my finger on the other side just to hold in the, the plastic nut so that way it doesn't fly out. Okay, another thing that I usually do is I'll push down on these tabs just to give it a nice arch so that way it puts pressure on the trucks so it gives it a good pickup. Okay, and just do a once over, look around, make sure that everything is good. Next thing to do is the lens cap. Okay, before we put the shell on, let's go power up the system and put it on the test track, see how it goes. All right, so we're powering up the system, voila. Okay, so spanner, new loco, create manually. Sorry guys, I know I usually do this on the computer. All right, so we're gonna come over to properties, come over here to advance. All right, so we're gonna read the decoder, but before we do that, let's see if the decoder does work. Uh, okay, let's say check mark. So we are on number address number three, and uh, let's power it up. See if the lights turn on. Sorry about that. That's the Rapido GMD unit. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So backwards, forwards. Give it a little bit of juice. Oh. wonder if it's my program track that might be dirty. So remember, we add a little bit of grease in here. She may be making a little bit of funny noises, but that's okay. So once we get everything programmed on this thing, we're gonna run it on the track for maybe about 15 minutes or so. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna wanna do is go back to the spanner, go to edit loco. Let's get the pen out so you're not seeing my fat finger. Uh, let's go to advance. Uh, okay, so it is on the pro pro it is on the programming track. So let's click that and let's read. Hey, hey, all right, so it's finished. All right, so one of the beneficial things for reading the decoder is that the system will know that it's a Digitrax. It'll also know the CVs and everything else. So if we go over here, click, if we did not read it, we wouldn't be able to write the speed curves and the max speed and all that stuff. Uh, this would all be, be blank. And also with, uh, sorry, I'm looking through the phone doing this one. Um, also the map functions over here. Remember, like I said, uh, first two outputs is for the front and rear headlights. Then we also have a couple of more outputs as well. 
So, so we have another, I think, four more. So we go down here. Yeah, see? Goes up to six, six functions, which is pretty cool. Maybe one day I'll put like a stroll beacon or something. Anyway, so <clears throat> once that is done, okay, so we go back here to this one, edit. Then we come back up here, and it's gonna be local. 9309, enter. Make sure that it's on the program track, and then we're gonna hit right. Da, 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 da. We're good. We're here. Address number 9309. Lights off, lights on. Forward. Backwards. And that is it guys. We'll throw this on the track, run it for about five minutes, 10 minutes, just to get the gears all greased up with the grease that we inserted. Anyways guys, let's go back to the table and put everything back together. All right, putting everything back together is the same way as we pulled it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the fuel tanks on. Uh, now, mind you, let's zoom right in. Here's something that you're gonna have to take a look at and pay attention to. The fuel tank has some details, which is going to show you where the front is. This is the fuel cap, or where they would fill up. This little tiny red thing, right here and there. Okay? One's the fuel gauge, one's the, like, the actual hole to fuel up. That is going to be the front. Alright, so now where's the front of the train? We know that this is the front, so we got to turn this fuel tank around and put it back in. Remember, it's hooks, so we're going to want to go like something like this. Hook, and then snap in. Alright? So hook, make sure that it's centered, and then snap in. There you go. All right, so that's good. Make sure that all the tabs are in line so we don't have any issues afterwards. Grab the shell. This is just how I do it. Just go in slow, feed it, and there you go. Let's throw this on the track, run it around the track for a little bit. All right guys, so these are the trains that will be replacing the NC decoders. We have the first GP40 SD60 and another GP40, this one's a Dash 2. Um, these two use the same decoder, so the SD40 and the SD... Sorry, the GP40 and the GP40-2 uses the same decoder. This is an SD60 and, and, and this is using a different decoder. Uh, still the same method for the SD decoder, but I will do another decoder install for this guy. Uh, for now, let's run the train. Afterwards, I'm gonna be doing a decoder install on this one. It's the exact same thing as that, so there's no need for me to do it for you guys. As I said, the NCE decoders do not work for my system. Not at all, only for the Railcom reason. Otherwise, the decoders are actually very good, very good motor controls. I'm going to be selling two NCE decoders for the S for the GP40-2s. There is a list of different other decoders that I will put a list out for them. Uh, once I get the decoder for this guy, I will let you guys know. So if there's anybody that wants to per uh, wants to buy these decoders, let me know, send me a message and uh, yeah. I'm going to send a link to my email. You guys can email directly to me. And then, like, as I said, once I get this, de uh, this decoder, we'll do the same thing. I'll let you guys know that when I'm ready to sell it. Um, for now, let's do a run by and see how it works. Speed step two. You can hear the motor in it. Three. Four. Slowly moving. Super, super slow. Wow, this is really good decoders. Sorry, guys. Let's try this again. Mind you, she is pulling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coal cars, plus this thing over here, which is not light at all. And the wheels need to be greased because they're super like noisy. But speed step number six and super slow. Wow. Very nice. Okay, let's do 10. A little bit faster. 20. Very nice. All right, let's bring up the speed. Okay. 
You can hear the the squeaky noise wheels. That's coming from that thing right there. Guys, until next time, keep on modeling.